going to tell you a story about what happens when you have a car accident in Panama because we are so keen on bringing you all of the information you could ever possibly need if you were moving to or visiting Panama. What do we do? We go and have a car wreck so we can show you how that process works. Okay. Because we're givers. Because <laughs> we're givers, yeah. exactly. All right, so here's kind of the baseline story. I'm gonna give you the background and then I will let the driver tell you the rest of the story because guess who was not driving? Me. Okay, so basically it was a Wednesday about almost three weeks ago now, which we'll get into that in a minute. Um, we had not intended to leave the house in Altos del Maria, but someone sent me a message. And this is someone is someone who I know is a crazy person, but there's a specific reason that I wanted to help this insane person and I shouldn't have done it. So I needed to go to El Valle to help this insane person who doesn't even live in El Valle. Okay, so uh, we get in the truck and we go and it's lightly raining. Now, there's a back road between Altos and El Valle that we have driven how many times? Dozens of times. Dozens, okay? So we're very familiar with the road. It's not like we were new to it, but it was lightly raining. Uh, so we go bebopping into El Valle, and we get to this village called Mata Ojugado. And it's uh, right before you get into El Valle. So Altos is up here kind of at the top of the mountain, and then you have to descend the mountain to get into El Valle and Mata Ahogado is like right before you get into El Valle. Now, being the passenger, I was actually, at the moment that this happened, uh, sending a WhatsApp message to our dear member on our Facebook group, uh, Adela. Okay, so she's a Panamanian that I've become friends with through our Facebook group, which speaking of which, um, if you want to see what kind of crazy idiot kind of situations we get in that we can teach you how to get through them. Uh, you're going to want to subscribe. You're going to want to click notify. And if you have any questions uh, or want even more information, you only get me once a week here. You get me every day of the week on the I Go Panama Facebook group. That's where, as of now, almost 17,000 people are asking questions, answering questions about anything, everything Panama, all linked below. Anyway, so Adela is a member of the Facebook group that I've become friends with. She's Panamanian. We're driving through Mata Ahogado, and I'm curious, what does Mata Ahogado mean? I mean, Mata is like dead, kill, something like that, but I was trying to figure out what it was. I didn't realize Ahogado meant Mary. Okay, so anyway, I literally hit send on that WhatsApp, and then this happens. So, as we pass through Mata Ahogado, we come out and there's one more incline down the hill once you uh, go into El Valle. And it's about a 6% incline, so I mean, it's really steep. And like, it's not heavy raining, but it's, it's a steady, uh, steady rain coming down, so all the roads are wet. Uh, we are in our Hilux and it is in four wheel drive. So we come past a bus stop around a left hand turn and we're doing maybe 20 kilometers an hour. You know, we're not racing through these hills, we're not a bus. You can't so, go fast anyway because there's so many potholes yeah, and blind exactly. curves and the road is narrow. Mm. So as we come around the first left hand turn, no problem. As I start to come around the next right hand turn, which is a 90 degree, um, since we've been up there, what we noticed is right as you come around the corner, there is a wash that comes down, looks like during heavy rains and stuff like that, that runs debris across the road. So it actually washes right across. So as I'm turning to take uh, to go into the right-hand curve, my front end completely loses traction, and we start sliding. I had uh, started to put on the brakes, but the front end started to go, so I let off the front and tried to use the emergency brakes to hit the back to maybe straighten us out a little bit. But by that time, all four wheels had lost traction in the mud, and we were sliding down the hill. Problem being, I couldn't try to ditch it one side or the other because there's like these big concrete ditches on either side that are at least two, two to three feet deep. So we only slid maybe a hundred meters. So we Which started, is a really yeah. long way when you're sliding. Right. Well, <laughs> being that it's probably about a 500 meter road, 
glad we ditched it at the top instead of gaining all that speed going down to the bottom. And uh, the uh, front end turned again. Um, like I said, I had no control of it. It went sideways into the hill, into one of the concrete uh, uh, ditches, luckily on the hillside, not the drop-off side. And the minute we hit, we are on such an incline that the truck just slow motion, kunk, right onto the side. And uh, we, we slid maybe a couple of feet down the uh, hill after that. I mean, it was so slick that a couple of four-wheel drives come up to check on us, and even the police and their four-wheel drive Hilux could not get up the hill. I mean, the minute they hit the bottom, they were all spinning. They couldn't make any progress at all. The only reason we got our truck flipped back over was a backhoe that was actually able to get up that hill. But we're going to get to that one. Okay. okay. Okay, so that's what happened. So, from my perspective, I had just hit send on the WhatsApp, and the next thing I know, we're careening. And I'm just like, what is going on? I mean, it felt like we were going like this for forever, back and forth. And then, like you said, uh, the, the side of the mountain was here, so it goes up, here's the road, and then the drop-off of the mountain's over here. So, we hit diagonal like this with the front end into that ditch, and then just, ding, tipped over and then slid. So I'm in the passenger side. We fell over on the passenger side. My window was down. And so I remember like laying and watching the asphalt through the open window as we were sliding. And I was just like, what is even happening? And we came to a stop and I look and the only thing I see is Brian's leg and shoe. What I don't even know how he did it because who didn't have their seatbelt on? So he came, <laughs> he came out of his driver's seat and so he didn't crush me. Keep in mind, I was a little less than three weeks out of surgery at this point. So to keep from crushing me, how he did it, I'm pretty sure it's your jiu-jitsu, martial arts, Spider-Man ninja skills. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. But he got his legs out and instead of falling on me, was able to like brace himself somehow. I don't even know. I'm just kind of laying there shocked and stunned. I don't even realize he has crawled out the driver's side window, which is now on the top of the truck. And then he's around on my side. And so he's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I didn't know. <laughs> so I stood up and I'm literally standing on the road through my window with my head what was my head poking out the driver's? Yeah. yeah, my head was poking out the driver's window. But A, even when I'm not three weeks out of surgery, I have spaghetti noodles for arm muscles and you know, <laughs> dogs. And I did not have the strength to pull myself up and out of the window. So, hey, shut up. So I didn't have the strength to pull myself up and out of the window. So Brian, uh, first we're trying to find my phone, like before I got out, why, I don't know, but I'm looking and I don't see my phone anywhere. And I'm standing there trying to figure out how I'm gonna get out of this thing and oh God, because again, we had a blind curve up above us on this hill that's slick and I'm just hearing cars come around and you can hear, like as soon as they get at the top, they see us there blocking the road. So they put on their brakes, but their wheels are like, squealing and they're sliding and I'm just thinking I've got to get out of this truck before somebody like comes and does the same thing right into us and freaking kills me. So a Panamanian came over and uh, the Panamanian and Brian like pulled me out of the truck. So now we have a truck that's completely on its side. Look, I'm going to put pictures and video of what we took while we were there, but it was so stressful. Like I was not even. You were in shock. Seriously, it was, it was a thing. Okay, so that is like the beginning of the story and, and then how all that started. So then kind of the second phase of the story is we can't find my phone anywhere and all of our Panamanian contacts are in my phone, which this is kind of lesson number one. Other, well, lesson number two. Lesson one is, do you know what it is here? Don't crash. Well, that's lesson one. Then what's lesson two? Uh, share contact. Oh, no. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> yeah, your centur Cinturon de Seguridad, I think is what it's called. Okay, yeah, wear your seatbelt. Um, but then if you're traveling as a couple and you have like all your insurance contacts or whatever in somebody's phone, make sure you have those in both because our insurance girl and hero and savior in Panama is Estefani Morales. And I didn't have her number because I didn't have my phone. Stop it. Anybody want dogs? Okay, so this was a problem because we're kind of in the middle of nowhere and we need to get a hold of Estefani. So um, this is where the I Go Panama Facebook group comes in handy, people, because I went and I posted on the group, guys, we just had a wreck. I need somebody to contact Estefani and get her to WhatsApp Brian's number. Within three minutes, Estefani was WhatsApping me. So we could take her. <laughs> Stop, Stop it. it. So, I'm telling you, the I Go Panama Facebook group is so much more than just a question and answer group. It's a support network. When you need help, you've got people all over the country. Like, so immediately I had Estefani's um, WhatsApping me so I could get everything taken care of. I had people in El Valle WhatsApping us saying, what can we do to help? Do you need us to come get you? Do you need water or food or a blanket or a rain jacket or an umbrella? Or what do you need? Do you even need a place to stay tonight? We're here to help you. Come on now. That's amazing stuff. I go Panama Facebook group linked below. Okay, so now let's get into the nitty gritty of kind of the aftermath of the accident and so how all of that played out. So I'm talking to Estefani and I'm telling her exactly what happened and sending her pictures. And the great thing was that, let's see, who showed up first? The National Police, National showed, up police first. showed up first. Yes, Officer Ortega. Yes. It was wonderful. And Officer Vildorama? Vildorama. Vildorama. It's been almost three weeks, so it's... But, um, so they showed up first. Now, of course, a lot of Panamanians were stopping, asking if we were okay, da-da-da. Um, and so the two national police showed up and kind of assessed the situation, made sure we were okay, were really trying to get me to go to the doctor. The only thing that I really had was my shoulder had road rash because when the truck was dragging I guess my shoulder was kind of out of the open window and kind of went across the asphalt but other than that I had some like neck soreness the next day a little back thing my knee kind of hurt a little bit but oh and my side where I kind of got bruised a bit but I was fine okay they were wonderful um, they went down and got the backhoe guy who came up tied to the truck and pulled our truck upright When they did that, one of the Panamanians that was on the downhill side says, hey, and so he's holding my phone. So what had happened to my phone was it had flown out of the window and was trapped between the road and the side of the truck. So that's why I couldn't find it in perfect condition. Shout out Samsung Galaxy and OtterBox. Mm -hmm. If you want to actually promote on our website. <laughs> yeah, Samsung, yeah. call me. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, um, so then at that point you get in the truck and yeah, we get in the truck, uh, we tie a chain to the uh, backhoe, and basically he backs me down to the bottom of the hill, which, like I said, was probably like another 500 yards. So we got it off to the side to a flat spot, unchained everything, and then we were just kind of left there. Mm -hmm. to our own Did he ask you for money? Nope, they, nobody okay. asked for money. Everybody was there. They helped, you know. It was a you know, good community. Everybody yeah. got together, and they are just trying to help people out. Yeah, and so... No one there spoke English and no gringos that were involved spoke enough Spanish to like for that kind of technical stuff. 
which again is where Estefane came in. Look, I'm gonna link her information below. You need to like get your car insurance through her. She'll help you buy cars, get your driver's license, all that stuff. Because then you have someone like that when you have an emergency that will take care of you. So I handed the phone to, S to Officer Ortega and said, can you please speak to my friend Estefani? So Estefani did all of the communication with the police officers and got all of that handled. Um, the next thing we had to do was, I guess the national officers did whatever they had to do. And then once the truck was secure and out of the roadway and they knew we were okay, they left. Then we had to wait for the transito so that's a different type of police, which the I guess is like traffic police. Yeah, it's the ATTT. Oh, it's ATTT. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is like the transit authority here. So that officer came, which was probably about an hour and a half, maybe after the accident. After the accident, yes. Yeah. So he came on a motorcycle and uh, gave Brian a breathalyzer. Do we have video of that? See negativo. Cool. Si, negativo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I get home. Because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he gave him a breathalyzer. Um, he said he did not need to file a report because there was no other parties involved and no one was injured. Um, so he left. But he did give us all of his information in mm -hmm. case we have a problem that any insurance, whatever, could call him and then he would actually explain yeah. the situation. Oh, and again, as soon as he got there, um, I got Estefani back on the phone, handed it to him, and Estefani did all of the communication with the transit police as well. So I knew that everything was properly handled on that end and there were no misunderstandings. Okay, so now we're waiting for the tow truck, which we have had to have the truck towed before. We had a part breakdown several months ago and we knew that tow trucks can take a while. Um, and so while we were waiting, an insurance lady showed up from Mapfree, which I was kind of shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> I was in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so she came out and she did a report. She took pictures. She wrote things on paper. Um, I, I don't know if I had Estefani talk to her or not. I can't no, remember. I, I don't think so. Talked to it her was before. yeah. It was all pretty standard kind of stuff. So she came out and did all of that. And then I asked her, "Do you know about how long before the tow truck gets here?" She said, "About 45 more minutes." Um, and so, yeah, it was right at about 45 more minutes after that. Before. I think it was before yeah, it was that. Like 30 minutes, within 30 minutes. The tow truck showed up. Now, again, this is about, at this point, we're probably getting close to. Four in the afternoon. Maybe, yeah, so about three hours after the accident. Accident. Okay, so a uh, tow truck driver shows up, and at this point, our biggest concern was how are we going to get back to Altos del Maria? because Altos is a gated community. No taxis are allowed in here. There's two entrances, one on the El Valle side and one on the, I don't wanna say Coronado side, but more like if you go past Gorgona and, and that Bejuco. direction, Bejuco, if you're Chorera, no, not Chorera, Chane, Chane, if you're familiar with that area. So it's a long way to get from where we were to this gate. And we wouldn't be able to take, if we had to take a taxi, it was going to be a really expensive one because we would have to go all the way around. It'd be about around. an hour and a half. Oh, easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Uh, so we're like, I was stressing about that, like trying to figure out how we're going to get back. Um, the people in El Valle on the El, uh, I Go Panama group are being so kind and just like talking to me through the whole thing and checking on us and see if we needed anything. It was really great. Tow truck driver shows up. Um... And what did he do? Did he get information from you? Uh, just the place where we're dropping the truck off. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, he and just needed the garage information. Right. And it was Estefane that arranged all of that. Okay, so the insurance lady came. I did not film that. So the insurance lady came. She took a ton of pictures, took a report, and then she left. And the tow truck just arrived. Hallelujah. So even in the middle of nowhere, you can get service. I mean, we had our wreck probably... What time did we leave the house, Brian? I don't know. We're we're lost, but it's probably about three hours since. Yeah, it's probably about three hours since we had our wreck, something like that. Um, two and a half. Yeah, about that. So yeah, he's here. And next thing we have to do is figure out how to get back to Altos del Maria. Okay, so I didn't have to stress about it because look, you're already in a situation where you are unbelievably stressed out. 
Then you're in a situation where you're unbelievably stressed out and have no idea how the system works. If I get in a wreck in the United States, I know exactly tick tock, tick tock, how things work. I have no idea how it works here. And you don't speak the language, making it 50,000 times more difficult. So Estefani, oh, like she deserves a halo and wings. She, had, she dealt with everything. Okay, so while they are loading the tow truck, speaking of angels with wings, this man comes driving by. He's going up the hill toward all those, and he stops. And in perfect English says, do you guys need any help? Are you okay? And wait, that was, was that before? No, the tow truck was no, there. The tow, the tow truck, truck was, was there. there. Okay. And um, I said, oh, no, we're fine. We're just kind of wrapping everything up right now. We flipped our truck. And he's like, well, where did you need to go? I said, well, we live in Altos. He says, I live in Altos. I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? He said, I'll take you home. This is the point where I finally lost it. Even thinking about it now, it makes me emotional because like, what are the chances? <sighs> so anyway, the truck gets loaded up. The tow man goes off with our truck. And oh my God, this man was so kind. He loads us up in his car. He says, look, I have to stop by my house first to let my wife know why I'm late. Um, so because we, uh, where they're at in Altos, they have no phone signal. So yeah, they have no can't signal. even call her and let her know what's going on. Yeah, because they live on this side of Altos, and we're on this side of Altos right now by the other gate. So he would have to go all the way through. So we stop at his house. We meet his wife. We stay in their home for probably, what, an hour or so. Yeah. They give us a tour of their home. We're just having conversation. Uh, they give wine to Brian. I don't drink. I had water. The most lovely people. Like, that's the thing I always say about Panama. The people here are so kind and so generous and just so giving and open and friendly and it's a breath of fresh air. It's really not like what I'm used to, coming from Los Angeles especially. So anyway, after we finished uh, visiting with them, he put us in his car and drove us right to our door. No one asked us for any money for anything that they did. No one wanted anything from us. Everyone that passed by was as helpful as they could be at whatever stage we were at. I mean, so all in all, it ended up good. I mean, neither of us were hurt. Everything was taken care of by Estefani. We were rescued by an angel and who actually is Venezuelan. Um, so. Uh, and he and his wife live here. Um, and then that brings us to the next part, which is dealing with the insurance aftermath. And so we're about three weeks out right now, and we're still waiting to hear if they are going to repair the truck or total the truck. Fortunately, we have two vehicles, so we have another vehicle that we can use in the meantime. But if you want to know how all of this insurance stuff plays out, which is Pretty important if you live here um, make sure you subscribe make sure you click notify and make sure you join the I go Panama Facebook group because that video will be coming as soon as we get a resolution to all of this all right and Panama so maybe next week <laughs> maybe six months we don't know no Estefani says she thinks we should hear something by this coming week so we'll see what happens all right so that is our story of having a serious car accident in Panama and how that whole process works out. I mean, to sum up, have your wreck, have your national police show up, have your transit police show up, have your insurance person show up, which is probably optional, and then have your tow truck driver show up. And if you're smart, you have Estefani Morales in your corner who will take care of all of that for you while you sit on the side of the road and shake. Okay, so, all right, that's it for this week. We will see you next Friday, as long as Brian doesn't try to kill me again. What's the uh, old country song? Keep it between the ditches? Yes, keep it between the ditches. That's a good idea. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll see you next week.